All right, folks, welcome again to yet another one in our series of videos on the topic of construction. In this video, picking up where we left off in the last video with the equilateral triangle, we're going to construct a square. All right, so basically what we're what we doing, uh, what we doing is, sorry, constructing what we refer to as regular polygons. Right, so I'm throwing in some vocabulary now, just throwing another concept that you can look at. Regular polygons, meaning a polygon where you have a certain number of sides and each side is of the same length. So in the case of, a, of an equilateral triangle, you have three sides. In the case where the polygon has four sides, we're talking about a square. In the case where the polygon has five sides, we're talking about a pentagon, six sides, hexagon, seven sides, heptagon, eight sides, octagon, nine sides, nanogon, ten sides, decagon, etc 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 right now with these um, principles of construction we can construct regular polygons of any size once we know what the interior angle is but that's a different conversation all right um, for most practical intents and purposes you wouldn't be required to go anything more than a square so in other words they wouldn't really ask you to construct a pentagon or a heptagon or a hexagon, all right? So once we get past the square, we'll move on to some of the other more complicated shapes, the rectangle and the rhombus and, and, and all of those things, parallelogram and whatnot. So back to this square story here, we start off as always with the construction of the baseline at the well, the baseline. Let me just leave it as the baseline, right? Somewhere at the bottomish of the page. So we can track a nice light line across almost the entire length of the page. So after we do that, we choose our point A where we will be starting the construction. And this time, just as we did in the last time, the side of the shape will be 9 centimeters. So in the previous video, we had, a, we had an equilateral triangle of side 9 centimeters. This time, we're going to have a square of side 9 centimeters. So just as we did, we measure out 9 centimeters on the compass. So you have a point here. Uh -huh. You put the point. Remember, this is a vertical surface, all right? So it is a little bit more tricky. Measuring this out on a horizontal surface should be a whole lot more comfortable. All right, so that's your nine centimeters there. So you measure your nine centimeters on the compass, and you come here, <coughs> you put the point down at A, which is the first corner or the first vertex, right? We try to use some mathematical jargon here now, and you describe a nice tight arc. Good? So that there would be your point B. Remember, do not measure it off on this line. You must show this arc to show that you would have measured the line somewhere else. And you put it down here with the compass. So you come here now and that is your point B. Good? That's the 9 centimeters. Now, here is where the basic construction starts to kick in. Because if we have to have a square, it means that we have to have 90 degrees here and 90 degrees here, which means that we construct a 90 degree angle at both of these points here. So we close the compass and we come on the point here and we construct a nice tight semicircle. Semicircle one, and we come here, right, make sure and use the same point. Well, this is the first time we choose that point here with the pointy end of the compass and semicircle 2. All right? So we have two semicircles there that we're going to use as the basis of the construction of the 90 degree um, angle. <coughs> so we now open the compass out at any distance, it really doesn't matter. All right? We take the point and we place it here and we drop a nice arc. Mm, well, we, I'm going to use two different lengths of arc just to underscore the point that the length of the arc doesn't matter. 
So use a big arc for this side. Push one arc here, and then you come here. Push one arc over there, and then we can take a small arc on this semicircle. Right? We take a small arc here. We go push here and we come on this semicircle here and we go whoosh here alright so with two of the same constructions with different radius with different radii you have to be particular with your language with different compass radii we now going to have two 90 degree angles so we take the point here and we connect it to our point of intersection up here and we say boom right one side there and we do the same thing here and we construct our point of intersection we join the point of intersection there and we go boom notice that I am extending the line well past 9 centimeters Reason being, again, we're not going to measure 9 centimeters here. Right? That is not what we're going to do. We extend the line so that we then go back to our good friend, the compass. Alright? We then go back to our good friend, the compass. And we measure in 9 again. So we put the point on the 0 here. And we're looking for 9 centimeters here. Yeah, this this position is a lot more comfortable with the compass. Alright? Right, so that's your nine centimeters there. So we measure nine centimeters out on the compass and we come here now at this point and we swing we swing like this. Push and then we come at this point and we swing like this. Push. In other words, what you don't want is to be measuring 9 centimeters here and then measuring 9 centimeters here. You do that, you open the door to possible mistakes. Because you can make a measurement here and then you can make a slightly different measurement here because it's two separate measurements. Whereas with the compass, once the compass remains stable, you scribe arc here and you scribe arc here, it is pretty much the same 9 centimeters. So this is a much more accurate method to construct the other two sides. And now you have the simple task of just joining the two points of intersection. Right? So that's one point, and that's the other point there. And uh, let's see. I'm trying to make the thing a little exact, right? So again, your pencil points have to be sharp. So if you have to sharpen your pencils a couple times during the course of a construction, no shame in the game. And that there is your square. So now, as always, we darken. So in other words, you don't construct and leave it like that. You have your arcs. You have all the little circle things there. You're showing them that that's what you did. A, B, this is your C here, and that's your D here. So your last step would be to darken the actual shape that you were looking for. So that is your first side and this side here you darken. Alright. You have a second side here. You darken. You have a third side here. You darken. And then you have a fourth side here. And you're darker. All right. Now, as we on this topic of darkening, let me take the opportunity to talk about one other thing. It is one thing to have a plethora of pencils, <laughs> right? A phalanx of pencils. You see, I've given all the extra vocabulary too, right? But you have to pay attention to the rating of your pencil. So, in other words. 
You want to have a dark pencil for this part here when you have to darken the shapes. And ideally, you want to have a slightly lighter written for the pencil that you will be using in the compass to draw the arc. So in other words, um, I might be a little off with the ratings, but let me talk it out still. We know where the pencil they have 1B, 2B, 3B, and 4B. Right? As you would see here, this pencil that I used to darken is a 4B. Alright? And I'm not sure what the rating of the pencil that I used on the compass was, but that's beside the point. So in other words, these are the little details you have to pay attention to when you're gathering your tools for this topic. Right? Ideally, you want two or three pencils of a lighter rating and you want two or three pencils of a darker rating. So you put the, pencil, the light pencil in the compass so when you're scribing, you have nice light arcs. You want to also be drawing the baseline with a light pencil as well. And then at the end of all the constructions, when you finish and you're looking to emphasize the shape that they ask you to construct, you come with your dark pencil now and you darken it out. So, I hope you see that this thing is not is a really nice topic, it's a beautiful topic, but you have to treat it with a certain level of respect. Alright, get your tools, make sure everything is sharp and ready. Alright, don't go in the exam with one pencil, don't go in the exam with a slack compass. Alright, take this thing seriously and you will be well on your way. So, right, so we now finish with the basic polygons, equilateral triangle, we have a square. Now we're setting up the stage for the construction of a rectangle, which we'll cover in the next video. And then after that, we will deal with some of the more complicated shapes.